tickets good what's the email looking like good heck yeah those emails are looking great all right let me just get my notes out we got a lot to talk about um all right, we're in the office. It's a beautiful, beautiful Saturday right now. Um, we're vibing out, really just trying to just trying to catch a vibe. It's kind of a gloomy day, nothing crazy going on. Making sure everything's right. I got a big love sack right in front of me. Um, but without further ado, welcome back to episode 37 of the Mac and Show. Cue the claps that still don't know how to add in. We're still a one man show. 37 episodes in, we're still a one-man show, still doing this shit. Um, and we're going to keep doing this shit no matter what, whether it's from a studio, a couch, a park, a conference room, whatever it may be, we're doing the Mac and Show. We're 37 episodes deep, not stopping now, and loving every fucking second of it. Thank you very much. But no, since our last episode, it was like eight or nine days ago, I'm trying to get on a weekly, I've usually been good with a weekly episode, but sometimes work gets busy, life gets busy, and not even life, just like work is busy. Because again, I, for a podcast that makes zero dollars at the moment, we're at the moment, we're manifesting it won't, but I can't not do my job to come to a podcast because that's just relatively unprofessional, not the vibe. Um, so I like to do it on weekend, just make, make time for both. And obviously like I, I like to take a priority with myself with this podcast. Cause I want it to be good. I want it to be fun. I want it to be all the right vibes. So we're here with episode 37. This last week has been a good one. Officially turned 25. My birthday was, what's the date? The 17th, three days ago, May 14th. I popped into this world 25 years ago, which is insane i'm sure like everybody who turns a certain age has that feeling when they turn i don't know 22 23 30 4 whatever it may be but sitting here being like shit like i'm 20 i'm 25 like that's crazy uh it's just been something i'm thinking about but i'm 25 years young thank you very much because all these people who like turn a certain age get fucking boring it's like no i'm still trying to be I don't even know why I'm explaining it because 25 is still fucking young. Thank you very much. But, you know, I'm still still doing my shit at 25 years old. But birthday was good. Um, I was joking with Emma that this is the first birthday I've ever spent without my family. Even being in L.A., that sounds so... Like, I sounded like such a pussy right there. But even being in L.A. for three years, it's the first birthday I've ever spent without my family. Because the first two years they would come out and visit like on my birthday. And obviously New York to LA, it's not some small trip. So, you know, they would come out for the birthday every time. Um, and this year just stuff got super busy. My mom came out in February. I'm going back to New York in September. So I was just like, I don't want you guys to have to like waste money and come out again, do the whole shebang and everything. So first birthday without my parents. Also, this is going to be a wild statement, but the first time I've ever had to work on my birthday, which is crazy. And I know that's like a very good luxury to have, but a back when I was in living in New York, it was, I mean, high school jobs and early college jobs. So it's just like, yeah, you can take off for your birthday. Like it's not that serious. And then when we moved out here, I would always like, again, my family visited. So I would always like way ahead of time be like, Oh, from like, the 11th to the 15th, I'm going to be, oh, 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 I can't work. Um, and it would just be birthday shit. So this was the first time I had to work on my birthday on top of, it's like the busiest fucking week since I've worked here. It's going to be crazy. I can't dive into it too much, but just a really, really busy week, but it was a fun week. We got to chill, went out to a surprise dinner with some friends, shout out Jamie and Emma for putting it together. Shout out Brett and Caitlin and J-Rod and Brianna, Bridget, Laura and Meg, Colin, Allison, everyone who popped out. It, it, it made me feel it made me feel nice and loved because it'll show you when I go into the story, it'll show you how dumb I am where it was like four or five days ago. Bridget, Emma, Jamie and I 
all went out to dinner. We went to the beautiful restaurant of Buffalo Wild Wings and I, B dubs, love B dubs. But we were there and I was joking how I wanted to go to all of our favorite Mexican restaurant for my birthday. I was like, yeah, we should go. And Jamie was like, fuck yeah, let's go. And then Jamie also joked. She's just like, we should totally throw Casey a surprise party, like in front of me as a joke. And I was like, totally like, hell yeah, sounds fun. I was expecting, because Jamie and them love to throw little parties at their apartment. I was expecting like, oh, they're going to do something at the apartment, fun, whatever. And then the next day, Jamie was like, in a group chat, we're all in like, hey, let's go to Los Amigos for Casey's birthday. And I was like, I, obviously, let's do it. But I was expecting like a group of like us five that were in the group chat that knew about it, like to go to Los Amigos. Shout out Los Amigos, Ohio. And we get there and... Kate and Bretland, Bretland, Caitlin and Brett pick me up. So I was like, oh shit, they're coming. Let's go. We get to the restaurant. I see J Rod and I was like, oh shit, like you're eating here too. Like you're at the restaurant. Like funny. And then he sat, I was like, oh shit. And then Brianna popped out. It was, it was a good dinner. It made me feel, made me feel nice and loved in LA to say the least. So it was a really good birthday. Honestly, it was again busy. It wasn't really like a huge celebration, but. It was a great birthday. Went to Giorgio Baldi for dinner. Didn't see Haley and Justin Bieber. That's okay. I wanted to see Haley and Justin Bieber because I wanted to let them know that it was my birthday. Even if nothing happened from that, I wanted them to leave dinner being like, it was that kid's birthday. And that is always going to be in their minds for the next 10 minutes of like, it was that kid's fucking birthday. I'd be, I would be their make-a-wish kid, to be honest. Um... But no, it was a great week. And then we also last night had a bonfire on the beach for Caitlin's birthday because me and her share the same birthday and she got a big group to go to the beach and have a bonfire on the beach, which I never had before. Never had a bonfire on a beach like where we come from in upstate New York, like there's no beaches. So every time you had a bonfire, it was either in the backyard of someone's house or a lake. So never had one on the beach before. And safe to say, it was a vibe. We were out there roasting s'mores, eating some snacks, playing football, doing guy shit on top of some girl shit. But playing football, so it was a good night. Honestly, both of our celebrations, pretty tight. A super vibe. But no, so it was a really good weekend. Other than that, it was kind of chill. Again, it's been so busy work-wise where there wasn't really like a crazy amount to do outside of work because shit was just so busy. So... It was a vibe to say the least, but it was really nice. And honestly, going back to talking about Justin and Haley Bieber, I couldn't have been more wrong. In a good way, though, where like a couple weeks ago, Haley Bieber got spotted with Justin Bieber in Hawaii. And she was wearing this dress and the dress was flowing in the wind and everybody was like, pregnant. She fucking pregnant. And I was like, guys, we've been here before when we make assumptions about people when you don't know what, and it tends to hurt people's feelings where, again, that's a, that's a dicey line to see a girl and just be like, she's pregnant without having her tell you she's pregnant first. Very dicey line. Some shit. I'm not, mm -mm. unless I know someone's pregnant, I'm not going to be like, oh, she's pregnant. Cause you don't want to be that person. Um, so I was sitting here on this podcast talking my shit like, oh yeah, she's not, no way she's pregnant. You guys are being just, you guys are fucking being mean, super mean to her. Like, let her live, not pregnant. What happens four days later? Boom, she comes out as pregnant. And I thought she was going to announce at the Met Gala because that would have been a crazy moment, but she didn't even go to the Met Gala. So everyone was like, ooh, what's going on? That made my suspicions even more like, "Mm, pregnant. She pregnant. And then. The posts come out. Her and Justin Bieber posted some cute shit. They were in like a big hilly field. Haley was in like a nice white dress, clearly pregnant. And it was their announcement. It's fucking awesome. So shout out to Haley and Justin Bieber. That's pretty sick. That's That kid's going to have a dope ass life. Like to think that you're going to be a kid whose dad is Justin Bieber, mom is Haley Bieber. You're probably going to be best friends with stormy webster your auntie your fake aunt is going to be kylie jenner and travis scott then 
Kendall Jenner is going to be your other aunt and whatever celebrity she ends up having a baby with. Well, it's crazy when I see like that kid's life is going to be so sick and he's going to be a beaver. Like, and it's crazy to think where now I'm going to sound like a fucking believer and girl right now, but seeing Justin Bieber now being a father, like, bro, I remember when baby came out, I was like middle school, I think like early middle, late middle school. I was in middle school when baby came out and dude is having a kid now. Like that's crazy. So shout out to Justin Haley Bieber. I think that's sick. Um, got a lot of love going around clearly and they deserve it. Justin's been through fucking hell. Haley's also been through some hell and they're having, they're having a baby and I love it. And of course you had your annoying Selena people in the comments, like eh, the Taylor's like just being mad haterish. And then in her fashion, Selena Gomez posted a picture of her holding hands with Benny Blanco on the same day that that announcement was posted. And then the internet sleuths went in and showed that Selena's Instagram post was taken like a week ago. And she just so happened to post a photo of her holding hands on the day Haley made her announcement. Like, again, that's that's a special level of jealousy and hating. That's that's spe- it's almost it's not, but it's almost admirable where it's like, you know what? You keep going on. I was absolutely expecting a social media deletion or the typical story saying I'm taking a break from social media. Because at that point, it's like, girl, like you got to move the fuck on. It's been a decade. Like you really got to move on. So again, I could be grasping at straws. Who knows? But regardless, shout out Haley and Justin Bieber. A lot of love going around. Fucking Canadian American kid right there is going to be sick. That's, that's dope. And speaking of Canadian and American beef going on, we got, I believe the end of Kendrick and Drake beef. I believe it's, again, I'm no insider in the hip hop world and shit, but I I definitely believe the beef is over because Not Like Us came out like two weeks ago, it seems like now. No response from Drake. There's been a lot of shit happening with Drake in between that. And, you know, I I do fear that, not even fear because it's definitely a fact, Kendrick has his back to back. And what I mean by that is when Drake was beefing with Meek Mill, not only did he just kill him in the beef anyways, but he released Back to Back, which instantly became a club hit, party hit, just a bop on top of like a good diss. And Not Like Us has the same vibe. It really, really does. They not like us. They not like us. Like Kendrick really found that hit right. Because don't get me wrong, like, like that, great song, but that's a future Metro song. Euphoria was a good song. 616 in LA. Meet the Grams was just creepy and weird. Like, just the whole vibe of it. And then, so again, great disses, but it didn't have that that asp- that Drake-type aspect to it. Not Like Us absolutely had that aspect to it. Where not only was it a good diss, it hits that club vibe, it hits that party vibe, and it's going to be a staple song. I mean... It's all over TikTok, like in terms of people just using the sound. So it's it's crazy. And I do believe Kendrick won the beef. I will say that. Um, just from the standpoint of what the diss was, having that club record for the diss, and just like the shit he talked about. Um, not to mention that like at this point, since there's no proof, like him and Drake were both just like straight lying on their fucking raps, like nonstop about each other. Now, again, something comes out someday, then it comes out, my opinion will change. But just at the moment, they were just throwing ridiculous allegations at each other, I think, just for the sake to do it. Because one started it, the other was like, I bet I'm going to turn it up a notch. Then the other one was like, I bet I'm going to turn it up a notch. And then, yeah, it just got crazy from there. And then after Kendrick dropped Not Like Us, Drake and his home have been... In hell, where a week after Not Like Us dropped, Drake's security guard got shot in a drive-by outside his house, and then there's been three people so far that have been arrested trying to trespass into his property, so like, it's crazy, to be honest. But the funny thing about that, and I saw academics talking about it and a couple other people, 
I don't think that has anything to do with Kendrick. I absolutely think it has to do with the weekend because what goes on, I have no idea, but the weekend clearly has some shit because again, the weekend's also from Toronto. EXO, his label with Cash and Sal from Toronto. They've been affiliated with Drake forever. EXO manages Future and Metro Boomin. And Cash's bodyguard also got shot like a week before in in Encino. So I definitely feel like the real life repercussions of this shit from what's been happening at Drake's house is absolutely a weekend and Drake thing and has nothing to do with Kendrick just because of the Toronto ties, Cash, Drake. So like, yeah, I don't think, and I do believe that if the weekend wasn't a singer, he would have absolutely entered the beef. Now, don't get me wrong. He did hop on Future's album, which kind of in a way is his own version of like entering it where he's like, I'm going to hop on this album. That's clearly dissing you and just like have a couple parts in it without like, he's saying a couple disses, but without formally throwing like a diss track. Cause if you're a singer, you're not the only person, the only singer I know who successfully does diss tracks all the time is Taylor. Taylor Swift is a master at the singing diss track. And she just obliterate obliterates every man who's fucked with her and she's a goat at that. But other than that, there's not really like a ton of like singing disses per se. So I do think if the weekend like was a rapper or whatnot, he would have for sure entered the beef, but he's not. And again, I don't know what their beef is specifically the weekend and Drake, because again, Metro Boomin was someone who clearly judging by his tweets has had a big problem with Drake. But judging by Metro's old tweets, you got to take a step back because Metro's old tweets, you ain't any better than anybody that you're dissing right now. Like, you got to get yourself in check because what the fuck? Um, But no, it definitely seems like it's an XO versus OVO thing. And where that leads, I don't know. I saw Kyle from the Nelk Boys talking to academics on his podcast that it wasn't that long ago that Kyle went to a Toronto Maple Leafs game. Drake was there. He went to an after dinner with Drake and Cash was also there. And he said it seemed like family. So it's just like, what truthfully? And when you get to the level of a Drake, Kendrick, XO, The Weeknd beef, the public is never going to know what truthfully is going on behind the scenes to make people mad. Like, you know, when you had Chicago people beefing with each other or drill and trap rappers, like, that's different because, like, A, they're not on a certain level, and B, they're just rapping about the shit. They're rapping about this person I fucking hate. I'm going to off him. All that type of stuff. Like, you can very well understand, oh, they're beefing because this man killed this man. Now they're trying to retaliate with work. But, like, so you get that. But when you get to a Drake, Kendrick, that level, I don't think the public will ever know exactly what the beef really is and and is igniting it because don't get me wrong. I know what we've been seeing nonstop of like, they're tired that the rain is over. They're tired that, you know, Drake's using the culture and all like that. What, what is this kumbaya bullshit? Like, you can't tell me like, Oh, they're tired of like, you know, Drake using the culture, blah, blah. Like what the fuck is the weekend doing them? Like the weekend is sitting there being a singer, using the same cult. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Kendrick's hopping on songs with Taylor Swift, like using a, like there's no I'm not buying the bullshit of like they're tired that Drake's still number one and his reign isn't over and blah I'm not buying that shit. There's definitely stuff that goes on behind the scenes that we will never know, or at least for a very long time we'll never know. And whether it's for even Metro Boomin tweeted about it. He was just like, if I told you the the real reason why I'm beefing with Drake. We'd both be fucked. So it's like, of course, person A probably isn't going to tell the world why they're mad at person B because then it's going to get them both in some shit. So, like, that's my view on it. But at the end of the day, I do think Kendrick Lamar won the beef. I don't think it's over for Drake. I know everyone's like, oh, it's it's Drake we're talking about. It is not over for Drake. He's going to come out 
with either an album or some songs, and it's going to be a bop, and we're all going to love it, and it's going to go number one, and it is what it is. So that was my take on the uh, Kendrick Drake beef, and then I guess we'll have to see where it goes from there because, again, like, I love both of those artists. So, like, yeah, it sucks to sucks to see. It's entertaining as fuck, but it sucks to see. But that's the beef for the hip-hop side. Now, in my world of the, you know, influencer, social media game beef that's going on, I never thought I'd see it officially get addressed, but the impulsive beef of George Janko and Logan Paul finally got some answers as to what's going on. And that's because Mike Malek, shout out Mike Malek, went on George Janko's podcast and truthfully had a full-on conversation about the downfall of Impulsive, what went on, like all the hate, etc. And essentially what I gained from that at first was George said he was barely making any money. Logan tried to stop him from getting a Celsius deal and Prime wouldn't give him another deal. Logan was just a dick, all this type of stuff. A day later, Logan on Twitter comes out with a green screen video debunking all of it, basically, where showing that George made like 300K in like 15 months on the podcast. He showed text messages, basically, of Logan telling George like, hey, like we don't want you to do a competitor, but like Prime will definitely sponsor you. So like maybe could we talk about it? Shows text trying to be nice to George. Shows that he encouraged George doing his own podcast when George wasn't there because he was being with his family. They encouraged it, and all like literally debunking everything George was talking about. So now I'm just like, I don't know where I stand with like what George's point is because like what you left impulsive. I, I it definitely had to have been an ego thing. Cause the Bobby Lee episode clearly was some big thing. And you know, Bobby was, you know, fucking around with George and kind of being rude to him in a way and stuff like that. But Bobby's a comedian. He's been a comedian for like 20 years. Like if you see the way that his podcast goes with Andrew Santino, they come from a world where they're shitting on each other 24 seven. That's what their podcast is. Even in, the Bobby episode of Impulsive, Logan and Mike were also um, shitting on... Uh, sorry, someone just hopped in the office and I have no idea who it is. Logan and Mike were also shitting on... Um, what's it called? Bobby as well. So it's just like, you know... And at this time of the Bobby episode, George was sitting there talking about he still wanted to be a comedian. Like that was an early, like an early, and that was a long stage of George wanted to be a comedian. And then he did stand up. He even let uh, Andrew Schultz even let him do an opening for his stand up and shit like that. And then after that, George is like, no, I found God. I don't want to be a comedian anymore. So it's like, why, how do you not have thick enough skin for Bobby Lee? And you want to be, be a comedian. It just didn't really make all the sense in the world to me. But it was just one of those things where it just seems like, and again, another thing that we might not see the inner workings of a lot of shit, but it just kind of, to me, seems like George is in the wrong a little bit and maybe not in the wrong, but just his points of why the podcast ended are wrong because, you know, for him to say X, Y, and Z is why I left impulsive and why it was toxic and then Logan comes out and he's like, well, X, Y, Z is just completely wrong and giving receipts and facts, then like, yeah, I'm probably going to have to side with Logan on that because he's the one giving me, George is being like very vague, not wanting to talk about stuff. Logan's like, let's talk about it. Then obviously I'm probably going to side with Logan because if if there's one person, you know, giving me facts about shit, I'm definitely going to kind of go with that. Um, and that's just, that's where my vibe is on, you know, the impulsive debacle at the moment. Also impulsive. If you need a, if you need a third co-host, I'm here. I will sit there and shut up until, till it's time to talk. 
be fun with guests. What's up? I'll do my I'll do my due diligence. I'll research every single. I'll be a, I'll be a good third co-host on Impulsive that's also not famous. So it's like a win-win, low key. But no, it's a vibe. And honestly, I'm trying to think of really like, you know, what else? Oh shit. Going back into beefs and comedy with Rose, I know last episode I gave the full breakdown of the Tom Brady roast. And it's so funny seeing the aftermath of that roast because after it was done, again, on stage, it looked like Tom Brady took it so well. And it was a good time, had by all, kumbaya, like, great. And then the days following, the comedians who were on stage and Julian Edelman and such, like, they went back to their podcasts and started talking and shit. And they were like, oh, sorry. Everyone who performed at the Rose was like, oh, Tom didn't come to the after party. And it's been, you know, no communication since then. And they, they, they weren't saying that it was negative, but they were just like, again, he didn't come to the after party. All this was going on. So then it was like, hmm, maybe, maybe he didn't think they were going to go that hard. And then Tom went on a podcast and was talking to the host just about, how much he didn't realize that the roast would affect his kids more than anybody. And it kind of wasn't what he expected and he probably wouldn't do it again. Now I love Tom Brady and he's a goat for even agreeing to be roasted and sitting through the whole thing. But for you to have been planning this for months with Jeff Ross of all people and either not watching other people roast other people's roasts or watching it and not understanding and maybe thinking it'll be different for you. Like, bro, Justin Bieber's roast, like Pete Davidson was up there saying his dad died 9-11 and he wished it was Justin Bieber. They were making fun of Selena Gomez, all this type of stuff. So it's just like, and that's Justin Bieber. So it's like with Brady, I'm like, how didn't you expect what was coming in a way? Maybe they didn't think people would go so in on the divorce. I don't know if like that's a hundred percent, but like they kind of went in on everything else. They, again, it wouldn't have been a funny roast if everything that was talked about was deflate gate and him and Belichick's relate. Like, cause we've seen all of that. We've gotten the 10 part Apple documentary. We've gotten, you know, for inside sports stories on ESPN for a sake, whatever it may be of like, we understand now like what goes through. So We don't want to hear more inside football drama. Like, we want you to get shit on. Like, that's what a roast is, is for somebody to get shit on in front of everybody. And he clearly either didn't think it through or just was kind of dumb to the fact of what a roast is. So it did make me be like, fuck, where I don't want other big people to see that and be like, you know what? Maybe big people who were thinking at one point, like, maybe I will do a roast for myself. And then, like, not doing it. Because there's so many, because Tom is like almost as big of a person as you can get for a roast. So when that was, when it was all said and done, I was like, hell yeah. He sat through that and was a great sport. And then people low-key went super in on him. So I was like, Kim Kardashian, LeBron James, fucking, who like big ass people. I was just like, I think, I think we're going to see more A-list celebrities being roasted and shit like that. And after Tom being like, eh, I didn't like it. I'm like, fuck Tom. Like, don't, don't ruin it. We want to see more roast. This was amazing. Um, so yeah, I just thought he was kind of very naive to, which is surprising given who he is and like, you know, intelligence wise and shit like that, how he was naive to it. But I'm hoping we can get more roast. I still think it was fucking awesome. Uh, another part of the roast that I was wrong about is when Jeff Ross made the massage joke about Robert Kraft, Tom Brady went up to him and said, don't say that shit again. Now it's a roast. Everyone's kind of acting like playing a character in a way. I thought Tom Brady was kidding. I watched that twice and was like, oh, like he's Tom's fucking around. Like he wanted to make it, he wanted to insert himself in that. It was joking around. Turns out it was not a joke at all. And before the show, Tom Brady told everybody, like, Robert Kraft is off limits. You can make, like, you know, Julian Edelman made, like, a funny funeral joke and, like, stuff like that. But 
he said Robert Kraft is off limits, which, you know, Brady has had a great relationship with Robert Kraft forever. So like, I get it, but it was funny to know that like, that was the line drawn in the sand. And then that also like had me know like, oh, okay, he was not joking around with Jeff Ross. Like Kraft was for sure off limits. Like do not fucking talk about that man. So Kraft even went up there and told Putin, I want my ring back, bitch. Like that's, that's crazy. Imagine your life where you can say a sentence like Putin, I want my ring back and have it not be fake. Like Vladimir Putin legitimately has his ring and he wants it back. Like that's just crazy. So I'm hoping that we get to see more roasts coming soon. Hoping Tom Brady's after comments and it ruin it for any people who do want to get roasted some days. That's just, that's my uh, view on that at the moment. Um, another big thing that happened, uh, in between my last podcast and this one was the motherfucking Met Gala, the Met Gala. And a lot of people were missing, like a lot of their, you know, main people were missing from the Met Gala. Now I'm not someone who sits there watching the Met Gala, like, but after, like, I always like to see the post of like who popped out to the Met Gala and shit. And Blake Lively wasn't there. Taylor Swift wasn't there. Beyonce wasn't there. The whole Jenner clan was, well, the whole Kim and Jenner clan was there. Um, I'm trying to think of other people who popped out crazy in the past. But there was just, like, a lot of their main people didn't pop out. Um, but my girl, Dua Lipa, popped out. A lot of people weren't really loving on Dua Lipa's outfit. Dua Lipa does no wrong, so her outfit was amazing. Tyla probably had the best outfit of the night. She literally just wore sand. That was fire. Literally had to get helped up the steps. And... You know, people popped out to that. One thing I thought was funny, and I was just like, what the fuck? Like, and maybe that was just their distraction, was that it's like a known thing that inside the Met, obviously you have your photo shoots and videos outside, but inside the Met, you never, ever get content from inside the Met. You never see it. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a couple times there was those bathroom selfies that would come out every once in a while. But that's only been like three times. Other than that, you have no idea what happened inside that mat. And this year, I saw fucking videos of like Ariana Grande performing. I was like, what? I was like, since when has there been a performance in the mat? And how did a video of her performance get out? Like, it was crazy. And maybe that was just like a one-time ordeal and the video literally somehow slipped through the cracks. But I was sitting here like, what? Like, I still want to know what happens in the Met. I would still like to one day be invited to the Met. One day and pay that seven. Like, also, you get invited to the Met. But even if you get invited, you have to pay 75K. Like, that's crazy. Like, your invitation costs 75K. Like, that's fucking, that's, that's wild. If you really think about it, an invitation that you also have to pay 75K is wild. That's fucking insane. But now the 2024 Met was lit. Maybe I'll be at the 2025 one. Who knows? Um, but shout out to Met Gala. Honestly, just a bunch of rich people admiring art and eating some fucking fancy shit meal at the Met. I want to be that one. I want to be like eating like the shit that was on from the movie The Menu. I, that's literally what I would expect. That's, that's what I would expect at the Met Gala dinner is the movie The Menu. They eat some crazy shit. They make a couple sacrifices. They go on with their year. That's... That's what I'd assume. They have a little Bohemian Grove moment call today. And for sure. But another thing that, of another event that's clearly like weight that is getting fucking out of control is F1 slash Grand Prix. What, who knows? But there was an F1 race in Miami like a week or two ago. And a screenshot came out of the prices of food food at f1 and there was one of them that was like a fruit platter for like 140 bucks there was nachos for like 190 bucks and then there was like lobster rolls and chip there were certain meals that wasn't some like a5 wagyu with shard like it was just regular meals that got up to like 300 bucks for a meal like that's fucking absurd that like they legitimately get away f with that type of shit and like how they can continue making the prices like that. Cause I get it. 
F1 is Rich Kids Club. I understand, like, but I feel like that's for the events and, like, getting your own box to watch it and shit like that. But, like, just for a meal, to be $150 for some nachos, like, I better be able to fucking chill with Charles Leclerc and drive his Ferrari after if that's how much I'm paying for my nachos. Like, that's fucking absurd. But... It was just, again, it makes sense because it's rich kids club. It's the same thing of just like, you know, if shit's expensive at the masters or, you know, Oscars after party for like, who knows shit like that. I get it. You're, you got a rich kids club. I understand that it's going to be expensive, but it's just wild to actually see people legitimately going up to a stand and ordering nachos for $150. Like, I don't think, I don't think I could ever be that rich if we're being completely honest. Um, but fucking f1 is just absolutely crazy and then another thing that was crazy in the world that literally just happened this morning scotty scheffler got arrested in the wee hours of the morning and then went on to shoot minus five in a pga championship that's kind of crazy now i don't know anything like i know his charges was like second degree assault of an officer resisting arrest driving away like He has, like, four or five, like, felony charges from, like, the morning. And what I'm gathering from it is that, like, there was something going on with police. Scheffler was supposed to, like, drive somewhere else and didn't. And that's what got him pulled over and arrested. But then, like, so many stories were, like, literally nothing happened. There was the video of him getting taken away in cuffs that... Didn't look like he got arrested at all. And on top of that, he got booked, had to wear an orange jumpsuit, take a mug shot, sit in a cell for a little bit, and then he left. Like, I never know instances of that happening. Like, don't get me wrong. There's so many instances of, like, you get arrested, you leave the second you post bail, which is, like, the second you get there for rich people like that. But the fact that they had him put on an orange jumpsuit, sit in a cell... And then leave is so wild to me to then know that he shot minus five in a PGA championship. That's pretty badass. That's, that's pretty gangster, honestly. And he was joking that he was working on his stretches and shit in a jail cell to then go shoot minus five in a PGA championship. So I have no idea what's going to happen with that. And if he wins the PGA championship, that's going to be insane. Like, that's truthfully going to be some wild shit, to be honest. And he's going to join the Tiger Club of dudes who have gone through their fair share of shit and went on to win some championships. So the Tiger Scheffler Club is, you know, a a small little two-person club at the moment. But I thought that was crazy that that was this morning. And somehow he's still going to be able to most likely win it, to be honest. Um, So shout out Scotty Scheffler. Um, Another angle of, like, what I want to or who I want to win is, man, this this Denver Nuggets-Minnesota Timberwolves saga is, is getting crazy. We're on Game 7. Minnesota Timberwolves had it 2-0. Nuggets came back and won three in a row. Timberwolves came back and won one more. And now it's Game 7. And I need Anthony Edwards in the NBA Finals. I need it. I need it so bad. I like Nikola Jokic. I really do. I think he's fucking hilarious. Like, I I love the fact that he is one of the best players in the NBA, has three MVPs, one finals, and doesn't give a shit about basketball and just thinks it's it as a job. Like, I, that's one of the things I admire about him the most. Like, he just wants to go race horse. I don't care. Like, this is a job to me. Like, I think Nikola Jokic is awesome, but Ant Edwards is just him. Anthony Edwards is fucking awesome, and I just need to see him in the finals. And one more win puts him in the Western Conference Finals. And with the matchups, if they can get this next win, I do think the Timberwolves can be either OKC or the Dallas Mavericks. So I'm okay with that, but they just need to get there. But then Dallas and OKC, I don't know. Like, it's it's tough. Because like, I honestly thought it was going to be an easy ride for OKC. But Dallas is fucking good, man. Dallas is really, really good. So I don't I don't really know who's going to kind of go on to win that one. And then obviously we have the Knicks at the Pacers. I don't really know who's going to sit there and win that one. Um, and then obviously 
uh, Celtics took home the win and they're going to the fi- the Eastern Conference Finals again. And honestly, I don't really care how far they get because I know Jason Tatum just isn't going to win a Finals, so I don't really give a fuck about that. I'm just a Jason Tatum hater. I don't really think he's – he's great. Trust me. But something about – Jason Tatum just irks the shit out of me. Something about the Celtics just fucking irked the shit out of me. So I can't sit here and vibe with the Celtics. So I'm hoping it would be great for the plot if we could have a Knicks-Timberwolves finals, which would also be insane. If any year you said next year will be a Knicks-Timberwolves finals, that's kind of absurd. But Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, et cetera, balling out for the Knicks, Rudy Gobert, Jaden McDaniels, Ant, except Cat, balling out for the Timberwolves. That would be such a fun finals to watch. And the media aspect would be great if it was the Knicks, too, for, like, in-person shit at MSG would be fucking crazy. So that's what I'm hoping for the NBA finals. We'll see. Um, Who knows what's going to happen with that. Also, who knows what the next state of who's going to be in the NBA. Because we got, we got Bronny at the NBA Combine. That's crazy to me. I thought Bronny was at least going to do one more year in college, which I guess is still kind of on the table, but he's out here at the Combine, and he's putting up some pretty good numbers at the Combine from just, like, quickness, his vertical, his wingspan, shit that people really like to see. And he played in an NBA Combine scrimmage, scored 13 points. Like, again, obviously he's not his dad. He's not – but you don't got to be – that's one thing that I feel like it would be less stress – if LeBron James was your dad, because it's one thing if you're if your dad was a professional sports player and he was really good, just really good, that puts some stress because it's like shit. Like, like I gotta I gotta I'm living up to a really good player. I gotta try to be better than him or at least as good as him. When your father's the goat, I feel like that almost takes a little less pressure off of it because it's just like literally the only thing. Just go into it being like, oh, I'm gonna get criticize unless I end up being the fucking go straight up and like it's pretty unattainable like the fact that LeBron was able to obtain that is ridiculous like it, it's truthfully insane so like I would go into it being like all right I'm just gonna be good like I don't give a shit like they're gonna say I'm a bust if I'm not literally the goat like to be my dad or better I have to legitimately be the goat like that's crazy so I would just go into it like I don't give a shit about that but no, there are some teams interested in Bronny, supposedly. Like, the Lakers are relatively interested in drafting him in, like, the sixth round. But then, randomly, the Dallas Mavericks came into the question and said they would be interested in drafting him Drafting him if they get a pick before the Lakers, which would be crazy because if the fact of... If the Mavs draft Bronny and LeBron wants to play with Bronny, imagine a Kyrie, LeBron, Luka, and then coming off the bench, Bronny. That would be insane to me because we only have a couple years left of LeBron. We really do. And if Bronny gets drafted to the Mavs, we might see LeBron in a Mavs uniform, see him out there in Dallas. And then that would be something in Dallas that is is bigger than football, in my opinion, for a little while. But no, I'm, I'm excited to see what goes on with the rest of the season for the NBA and what, what leads us into offseason shit. But more offseason shit, and speaking of going back to Dallas, whoever – in the marketing or creative department at the NFL that decided to come out with this video series of teams for their schedule releases needs a raise. They do because it was fucking hilarious. Like Dallas had a really funny one where Post Malone did one with some Dallas people and then um, Dak Prescott and Jerry um, – sat there and did their own where they just FaceTimed a bunch of people like Shane Gillis, Chris and Uchek, Burt Kreischer, Michael Vick, et cetera, just FaceTiming a ton of people and just basically like who are fan, PFT commenter, and just showing them what their schedule is like. The Chicago Bears had a funny one where they had uh, Big Cat in it. The Chiefs did like a, uh, not Minecraft, fucking a Sims one where they had Harrison Buckter, whatever the fuck his name is, in the kitchen, which is hilarious. Like, whoever came up with the ideas for these needs a raise because it was hilarious. And I definitely now, for years going forward, am going to look forward to the schedule release videos for NFL teams because ever since Jacksonville came out with the one where they were at, or the Titans came out with one where they were asking random people on the street what the team was. 
it set the bar for like you need a funny schedule release video. So I think that's dope. Um, and yeah, shout out to the NFL. And honestly, other than that, we've just been vibing. I'm excited because literally in about what is it? Uh, oh shit! One week from today, I will be at Crypto.com Arena, being able to watch Caitlin Clark versus Cameron Brink, and I could not be more excited. I could not be more excited because it's it's go time for the WNBA and the fact that I'll be able to see WNBA at the crypto.com arena because it was originally in Long Beach and that's supposedly where the Sparks play their home games and I bought I got tickets for that game and then I got an email being like oh your tickets have been canceled because the the event's canceled I was like the fuck and it's because it moved from there to crypto because of what the game is so I got accredited that money back and I was like shit but since it's crypto we got awesome ass seats for this game. And I get to see Caitlin Clark and Cameron Brink ball the fuck out. So I'm excited. 24th could not come soon enough. I'm absolutely wearing a Caitlin Clark jersey, getting some Caitlin Clark merch. I'm hyped because Caitlin Clark, I'm really hoping she balls the fuck out. And I'm also hoping Kim Kardashian pulls up to this game too. Because I'd like to meet her and say hello and tell her that it was my birthday last week. That's all. I just want to let her know that it was my birthday. But. I'm excited to be able to watch Caitlin Clark ball out. She's also, like, don't get me wrong, the Fever don't have a great, I mean, they've only played, like, three games. But Caitlin still has, like, 20 points a game right now. Like, and people are like, ooh. Like, give her a little bit of time, and Caitlin's going to be balling the fuck out. Trust. And so is Cameron. So is Angel Reese. Camilla Cardozo. Like, all the other people are. But I'm just a Caitlin Clark fan. So, of course, I'm going to be like, she's going to ball the fuck out. But I'm excited to watch her go kill shit at Crypto.com Arena. And me and Kim Kardashian are essentially just going to be hanging out because we'll be in the same arena. So I'm hyped for that. Got a busy-ass week coming up. Like, stupid busy week coming up. So I just wanted to come in here and film another little episode. Still trying to work on getting better at different aspects of the podcast as much as I can. Like, I want, I'm trying to find someone to help do graphics, make clips, make, like, an intro, stuff like that. Because I have the ideas, but with how busy I am with work shit and whatnot, it's tough for me to sit there for like eight hours a day learning how to make video graphics and stuff. So bear with me. We'll get to it, I promise. But no, other than that, episode 37, I'm hype. I love doing this shit. Uh, this podcast is a little baby of mine, so I cannot wait to see where it goes. I got some good, good feelings about it, but I appreciate whoever tunes in. And after episode 37... Peace.